There's one thing I need to clarify when I ask how big is Armored Core 6, and that's what metric I'm using. I'm not talking about its popularity or sales numbers. I'm pretty sure everyone already knows that it's easily the biggest Armored Core game by those measurements. No, what I'm talking about is the literal physical scale of the in-game world and the machines within it. One of the appeals of the genre is how huge and powerful these machines can be, and these games are no different. But Armored Core 6 just takes everything to a whole new level for the series, and I want to really get into how unbelievably massive some of these things would be in real life. Unfortunately for me, a few other people have already covered this topic since I started work on this video, but before you leave a comment about how I stole this idea from someone else, I'm gonna ask that you first watch this video to the end, since I really think this deeper dive into the subject can still give some more perspective on just how absurd this game's scale can be sometimes. Thank you in advance, and now, let's get into it. I think the first thing we'd want to find would be the size of an average armored core, or AC. This card that I showed earlier might give you a general idea of how big an AC would be, but there are actually quite a few ways to get a more precise answer. The first of which would be these things. They're pretty common in the first few chapters, and it seems like they line up with the appearance and dimensions of a standard 20 foot container. Stack them up, and the tutorial AC comes out to 33.8 feet, or 10.3 meters. Another method could be to use the in-game radar, which tells you how far away a target is from where you're currently standing. So if this equals 100 meters, and the height of your AC makes up 10.3% of that, this will also give us a height of 10.3 meters. But the easiest method is to just port the AC into a 3D modeling software, and you'll see that it uses a standard virtual measurement system, once again giving us 10.3 meters. The height of an AC can change a bit depending on the parts used, so the shortest one I could make came to 7.0 meters, while the tallest one ended up being 13.2 meters, though most of them will usually hover somewhere between 10 and 11 meters in height, including Rusty Steel Haze, Iguazu's Headbringer, and the model that I've been using for this video. So yeah, these machines are pretty big, with most of them being around the same size as Optimus Prime from those live action Transformers movies. But this is only the beginning. The first boss you fight is known as the HC Helicopter, and if you exclude any weaponry or rotors, it still comes in at 80 meters tall, 190 meters wide, and 230 meters long, instantly dwarfing your mech in the first mission of the game. The numbers are kind of ridiculous on this thing, and it's easy to forget how big it really is just because of how fast it can move during the fight. I mean, just think about how heavy this thing would be. Given how consistent everything else is with the metric system, I'm going to assume one in-game unit of weight is equal to one kilogram. This means the weight of some parts might seem a degree of magnitude smaller than you'd expect, especially when comparing their size and weight to real-life armored vehicles, but if Street Fighter can tell me this guy weighs 150 pounds, and Dragon Ball can tell me this guy weighs 134 pounds, then I think I'll give these measurements a bit of wiggle room. At about 36 and a half tons, a lightweight AC can travel at a consistent 604 kilometers per hour while assault boosting. This just barely beats out the speed of the world's fastest bullet train, but generally, the larger and heavier your AC is, the slower it moves. This rule does not apply to the helicopter. We can see it reach speeds of over 3,000 kilometers per hour in certain sections, so it's easy to forget that something that can reach Mach 2 in a matter of seconds probably weighs more than a kiloton and is roughly the size of the Titanic. Now is probably a good time to point out that From Software's other recent games, like Dark Souls and Elden Ring, use the same virtual measurements as Armored Core. So, for some perspective, the player character in Elden Ring stands at about 1.6 meters, Melania reaches 2.6 meters, and General Radon is just over 7.6 meters. Radon's height exceeds the smaller AC models, but only the really big bosses like the Fire Giant can beat out any build you can make. Here is the HC helicopter, and while the Ancient Dragon Grand Sax would still beat it out, it only takes 7 missions for you to find something that makes everything before it look like a joke. Commence mission. Make contact with the Strider. The Strider is just unbelievably massive. It's over a mile tall, standing at 1.8 kilometers at its highest point. It's taller than the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, and the Burj Khalifa combined. And as much as I want to spend more time talking about this thing, it doesn't even hold the title for the largest boss. 
A lot of online articles claim that the Ice Worm is the largest boss, which I don't even know how they came to that conclusion when it's not even as tall as the Strider when fully stretched out, but the real answer, at nearly 13 kilometers tall and over 7 times the size of the Strider, is the first boss of Chapter 4, the Nepenthes Defense System. This one is kind of cheating, since only the partitions and this part at the bottom can actually move, but considering its name, I think it's so much cooler if you count the whole structure. Nepenthes is the real-life name of the genus containing pitcher plants, which drown and consume many insects unfortunate enough to slip down the shaft. It's hard to even find any real-world examples to compare this to. It's taller than any mountain, it's over twice the size of Elden Ring's Erd Tree, and if you can believe it, it's still not the biggest structure in this game. So, shortly after the Nepenthes fight, you'll discover an underground city where all the coral seems to be converging at. The final boss of the chapter, while being one of the most difficult fights of the game, isn't too impressive when it comes to its size. But I want you to take a look at what's behind it. This is the Vascular Plant, a machine designed to scoop up as much of the planet's coral as possible into one place. Just from what we can see of it, it's taller than every other boss combined, and the widest ring at the top measures over 43 kilometers in diameter. If you put together the maps of Elden Ring and Breath of the Wild, you'd make up about 5% of the top disc's surface area, and From Software still manages to make it bigger for the finale. At the start of Chapter 5, 621 is in the process of re-education by the Archibus Corporation, but after some unspecified amount of time, 621 is rescued and told that Archibus has repaired the vascular plant. And by repaired, they mean built into space. Even at this size, the vascular plant and the entire planet of Rubicon are fully modeled and to scale. And while Rubicon's diameter is only a bit over 7% of Earth's, it's still hard to wrap my head around just how big the vascular plant is. I'm just going to give one last comparison using the Erd tree again. Here is the Erd tree, and here is the vascular plant. If that's not impressive enough to you, that's fine, because I lied. This is the vascular plant. I don't know how long the time jump was between chapters 4 and 5 for them to be able to build this, but it has to have been several months at least. And yeah, I can't think of too many other games with man-made objects this massive. I'll list a few here that come to mind during the editing process, but if you know of any other examples, or just have any thoughts of your own on big stuff in games, then I'd love to hear them. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and as always, Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.